Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Racing the Races. So we've had the handicap marks come through and wow, well, there's quite a few that caught my eye this week. There's about eight over hurdles, maybe 10 or 12 over fences. There's a couple on the flat as well. Um, and that's where we'll start. First one is the Grand Vizier has dropped a pound for his run at Wolverhampton. As I highlighted in a previous video, um, the way he was ridden was purely, and you could see it was a, a clear fitness run. And the handicap had dropped him a pound, as I said, to 101. That means he's two pound lower than when he was second in the Chester Cup last year, off a mark of 103. Um, he's got an entry, that's where he'll be going. And I would expect a, a massive run from the Grand Vizier. You know, he's won at Royal Ascot, I think he's finished third at Royal Ascot. He's a classy horse on the flat. He just needs to be pushed along and keep going from the front. Um, and he can run a really big race in the Chester Cup which is on the 6th of May, so not too long, less than a month away. Second horse is another Ian Williams horse, um, Rashoon. He's now dropped pound to 98, which means he's just a pound higher than when he won at Royal Ascot. You can imagine that's where they'll be going with him. You know, they like these staying handicaps uh, and staying condition races at Cheltenham, uh, at Cheltenham, sorry, at Royal Ascot. Um, and that's where you, could, you would imagine that Rashoon will be heading back to as well for the two mile three um, race at Royal Ascot, which he won last year at 66 to 1. Moving on to the hurdlers. Now, some of these have gone up in the weights. Um, Langadam went up eight pounds to 145. What we've got to remember, though, is he was given, th he was given a three pound drop for his effort at Taunton, which was all arguably you know, not undeserved, but people thought he could win off 140 anyway. So you could say he's only gone up five pounds here. And personally, I don't think that's enough. And I do have a plan for him. And this would really annoy a lot of people. I'm just turning my phone down so I don't get any notifications. This would really annoy a lot of people. But I do wonder whether they might do this. Run him at Taunton next year in February and go for the Coral Cup. That's it. That's the plan. And if that doesn't work, come back for this entry race. You know, if you have a horse that runs three times in a year, it's not that bad, to be honest. And even if he were to say he won at Cheltenham in the Coral Cup, you could still come back for this entry race, possibly, and get in. Um, you know, he'd be right up nearly off, off top weight. But what's to stop them doing something like that? Or, you know, targeting the, the back end of the season, maybe a, an entry at Cheltenham, and a sand down, potentially, you know, there's normally three or four weeks between it. Um, you know, that's where they could look at. And there's nothing wrong with waiting throughout the season and targeting those bigger races in the spring. Um, you know, horses get three runs a season and, and people are, are fine with that. It's just because Langadam was, it was clear that he was well handicapped, that people felt he should have been running earlier. Um when you know he won a he won a race at, at entry, it didn't work at Cheltenham. He got brought down. Not his fault. Do the same thing next year. Go to Taunton, see what happens. Help hold him up, and then go for the Coral Cup. Or even I don't know whether he'd get in the Martin Pipe. He might do. Um, if he does, third time lucky. Moving on to Might I now he went up uh, seven pounds to one four two. I guess he'd go up seven pounds to one four two. Because the handicapper, as I said to somebody who's, who highlighted that, I think the third was rated 145 and the winner was rated 150. So he should get in the middle of that. But the handicapper just gets two dice, or die, I think you call a plural of dice, two die, rolls them, sees what number comes out and goes, yeah, that's what he'll go up, you know, on, on beating horses. He's gone up £7 to 142. It's frustrating because I really wanted him in a handicap in the first place. I do wonder whether there is a handicap for him. Possibly something like, maybe like the Silver Trophy, or, the, or, or maybe they'll go Persian War. That's where I think they'll actually end up next season, in the Persian War. Um, I mentioned the Silver Trophy, and there's two horses that I like for the Silver Trophy. The first one is Phil's Duderie. He just keeps bumping into horses. He got beat at Ascot by Unexpected Party, went up £12. And he's got beat by Langadan now, who's gone up £8. Since moving to Nicky Henderson, he's been really unlucky to bump into those two very well handicapped horses. So where could they go with it? Well, the Silver Trophy looks the obvious one for me um, in, I think it's October, at Chepstow. 
if there was a horse that could be really well handicapped for that, it's this horse, Flash the Steel. He's pulled up his last three runs after winning a handicap of 141 at Newbury. He's dropped now to 127. He dropped five pounds for his latest effort. And they've dropped him quickly. Now, why does the Silver Trophy look an obvious target for him? Well, in 2019, 2019? 2019, he won it off 130, a three pound high mark. And last year, he was second, or in 2020, sorry, he was second off 138. Looks obvious that they, would, that they should be going back for that off a 127 mark. This race here, you can see he got beat this year, or in 2020, sorry, by the top rated horse, T Clipper. So the form was good. T Clipper's done right this season as well over fences. The form was good. Yeah, I think that's where they'll be going. Back with Flash the Steel. I'm sure Nicky Anderson would not want to see him there because he, the horse would be well handicapped, um, but might not have the same ability as he did have. Whereas Phil's Dudery, that's where I hope they go with him. Go and win a handicap. And then, it, you know, if you're going novice chasing, win a handicap over hurdles first and then go over fences. You know, get ex uh, get a run under your belt in a handicap that you could actually win before then going chasing. And, and you know, the, if the first run, because you lack fitness, you don't quite get your jumping right, it can really upset the whole season. Um, so that's where I hope they target Phil's Dudery. Stay over hurdles, go to the um, Silver Trophy and hope Flash the Steel doesn't turn up. The next horse that caught my eye was Wizkid. Now, I highlighted the race at Aintree and said, I'll be looking at the four horses there to see what they go up. And the winner, Hacker de Place, went up five. The second, Severance, went up three. The third, Washington, went up one. And Wizkid went up one. Now, I, I think Wizkid, if you gave them all 100% as a level of how good their ride was, Wizkid would have come out the lowest of that. It wasn't low, don't get me wrong. He didn't give it a terrible ride, but I think he gave him the least efficient ride in that he went forward. Um, he got going quite early, dropped back, got overtaken by one, and then went forward and went for home probably too early again. Now, I think if any of those three could be given a slightly different ride that could enhance their, their chances next time, it's Wizkid. And to see Wizkid only go up a pound, whereas... Hacker de Place has gone up five, so four pound difference for what was the difference in the finish was probably the difference given due to the ride. If the ride was was a little bit better, um, I think Wizkid could certainly reverse the form there. And with that four pounds, I think that's you know Wizkid would be the one I would be very keen on. I think they'll all probably end up in this race. The uh, Swinton, it's a decent prize. It's over two mile. It's next month I think um, yeah that's where I think we'll, we'll see all of them and Wizkid would be my preferred selection there the uh, Richard Newland, Dr Richard Newland trained Wizkid another horse that I was surprised he got dropped a pound to 149 was uh, McFabulous, I thought he ran a really good race in the um, grade 1 at um, Aintree, beaten by Epitont Beaten by Mon Morel. Nothing wrong with that. Um, both of those are, are grade one horses in front, but Fabulous drops a pound. Just find a handicap, please. You know, it wouldn't it wouldn't bother me too much if they targeted graded races all like, all next season. Turned up at the Coral Cup of one four nine. I think it'd go really, really close. Um, that could be the plan. Um, I guess they might think about going over fences soon now as he's going to be eight turning nine. I hope they don't, because I think he's well handicapped over hurdles. Two friendly ran at entry in the grade one and arguably never had a chance. Um, you know, he's a handicapper that isn't good enough for the grade ones at the moment. The handicapper dropped him a pound to one, two, five. And we know that this is where I hope they run him in the limited handicap at Chepstow. Um, I think this is the race that would, would suit, um, too friendly. And I know Dan Skelton does believe that too friendly is well handicapped. Um, just the fact that he said that before Cheltenham and he ran well for fifth to then run again at Aintree, but not in a handicap. And they haven't targeted a handicap. Obviously they couldn't, um, but they targeted the grade one 
if you think you've got a really well or a well handicapped horse, why would you then run it in a grade one? Because they think, well, we might as well take our chance. If it doesn't work, we'll then drop back for the handicap. Hopefully that's at Chepstow. Uh, Gary Claremont dropped two pounds to one three nine. Now, I think that's interesting because he, he keeps dropping for running decent races. But I think the big thing for him is he doesn't want this far. I really don't think he wants two and a half mile. I think he wants two mile. I know it's a very crude measurement. When he when he's run over two and a half mile, his last three, he's been meeting eight and a half, pulled up and ten lengths, that is. When he ran over two mile, he was beaten three and a quarter and three quarters. Three and a quarter at Ascot, uh, um, yeah, Ascot the second time, and three quarters of length the first time um, at Ascot when he was second. That's the trip I think he wants. I think there's an obvious race for him. I'd like to see him in this next year, the Great Wood. I think the strong pace will suit him. Um, yeah, and no, I, I think he doesn't want that two and a half mile trip. I think he wants two miles. And the fact that they keep dropping him for running okay, and in my opinion, over the wrong trip, is very eye catching. You know, by the time he comes back to Cheltenham um, for the Great Road off 139, he's three or four pounds lower than when he was finishing second and third in, in good handicaps over two miles. The final horse I want to talk about uh, is Emma Tom. Now, he ran absolutely no race for us at Aintree and very disappointing. But that meant the handicapper dropped him another five pounds down to 130. That's getting, you know, if he can't win off 130, it's probably, you know, they almost want to think about maybe getting close to retirement. I think they can win off 130. I think the ground was just far too fast for him um, at Aintree. He didn't like it. He never got into any any sort of rhythm, and Rachel pulled him up quite quickly. I think the fact he was beaten after a circuit doesn't demonstrate that it was too early. If he'd been beaten turning in, you know, and then started to struggle, I could understand, okay, maybe he's not good enough or, you know, he's not going to win a race. But the fact he was beaten with, you know, still a circuit to go, there was clearly something not right. He was hating the ground or, or you know, even potentially had a, a slight injury or, wasn't feeling right. Dropping five pounds down to 130 gives him an excellent chance in his next handicap. I think he won't be running in a uh, such a hard handicap. I think he'll, they might drop him in class. I think this is the race for him. This one here, there's a Potemps Network Handicap Qualifier. Um, and this was in October of this year, 23rd of October. You can see the type of horses that ran in it. They're good. You know, there's some decent horses in there. Tully Begg, Panic Attack, Kansas City Chief, are they the ones that go and win the, the feature handicaps at the Cheltenham Festival, for example? Probably not, or no, is the answer. It's a slightly easier race, and it's over three mile at Cheltenham. The last time he ran at Cheltenham, over three mile, if we go back through his form, it was here. He was fourth in the Stayers Hurdle, the Grade 1 Stayers Hurdle. Returning off 130 in a Potemps qualifier, it's got to be where they've They've got to look at that. Um, and if he can't win that, and he doesn't run very well in that, I would then be looking at, you know, completely crossing him off my list for, for a long time because that should be should be well within his reach if he's got any of his ability still there. So that's it for the flattened hurdles. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm really keen on the Grand Vizier for the uh, Chester Cup. Langadan isn't done winning off, um, now he's up to one for five. I think that's very uh, lenient. Phil's Dudery and Flash uh, the Steel could both go for this Silver Trophy next year. Wizkid would be the one of the four from the um, Conditional Jockeys uh, handicap at Aintree, possibly or hopefully for the Swinton. McFabulous, just when he drops in a handicap. Too friendly to Chepstow. Gary Claremont dropped back in trip. And Emma Tom giving one more go in a lower, slightly easier race at Cheltenham in October. Uh, the chase uh, horses I'll be recording shortly. Um, there's quite a few of them as well. So look out for that video. Thank you.